Hey guys, so today I'm I found this uh this Game Boy Color motherboard and the audio just absolutely does not work. So I'm gonna go over every little step I take to try to see if I can get it working. Um, the main point of this episode is probably going to be replacing the capacitors. So I have this kit here from console5.com. So um yeah, let's see if we can get the audio working on this Game Boy. All right, so here is the Game Boy. Um, it has an aftermarket speaker in here, but I don't think that makes any difference. I don't think that's the issue. So you can see I turn it on here. I'm gonna hold it up to the microphone. And that's it. It makes a tiny little click sound when you turn on the power switch and then absolutely nothing. If you hold it to your ear with it on maximum volume, there's the absolute faintest little sound that it makes. So the system is functioning, and when you plug in a, and a like an OEM screen, it, it works. So it's not an issue with the system. I do think it's definitely an issue. I mean, I guess that's part of the system, but I think it's definitely an issue with the capacitors. But real quick, um, let's go ahead and try cleaning the Game Boy thoroughly. So in a previous episode, I showed you how to completely disassemble the power switch. Uh, for now, I'm just gonna be kind of lazy and I'm gonna do it the, the fast way and just uh, drip some uh, isopropyl alcohol into there. It's not really lazy. I mean, it definitely does help. It does something in there. Just not quite as thorough. So just really get a lot in there. Okay, so that's the power switch. That should hopefully be a lot cleaner now. Um, let's also clean the uh, this little uh, the volume volume wheel, wheel volume potentiometer, whatever you want to call it. They get a lot in there. I've seen people use like dental floss. They wrap it around there and like pull it. Um, they also have replacement of these volume wheels, which are very inexpensive. You can get those on retro modding, eBay, AliExpress, anywhere you want. But yeah. We're just gonna try to quickly see if we can get this working. Um, and sometimes another issue is the headphone jack. I'm going to quickly plug in a pair of headphones and see what we get. Okay, so that's something. So it's definitely working. The, uh, this power port here is, I think this is either bad or something. Um, this, I noticed the volume wheel actually isn't really working too well either. At full volume, it sounds like nothing. A little bit quieter like this, um, it, you can hear it pretty well. So let's try that here. Okay, I can actually hear that better now. There we go. So maybe it is an issue with the volume wheel. So there, that's maximum volume now. So it seems to be working. So there was definitely some dirtiness going on somewhere, corrosion. Um, I'm also going to try cleaning the headphone jack here. And the way I do that is, again, with a lot of alcohol. And then when you put in a pair of headphones, when you plug this in, you can see a little metal piece engage and disengage. And you wanna get a, like something sharp, like a razor blade in between um, that little piece of metal and just kind of scrape it 
to clean away any uh, corrosion that has happened there. So that definitely is something that always needs to be done. I think the speaker is fine. It seems to be working. Let's give it one more try. It's on full volume now. Okay, so it's sounding much better. But I am going to go ahead and replace the caps because that's kind of the point of this episode. I wanted to show you how I do that. These capacitors don't last very long anyway, so I typically like to um, replace them on every single mod that I do anyway. So the quickest way I have, oops, I have a, an old uh, messed up board here that I use like for testing stuff. Um, the easiest way is that these are kind of soldered to the board underneath them and even heating up the two sides isn't really enough so I found the best way, uh, a friend of mine named Ian actually showed me how to do this, um, is to just take some pliers, grab a hold of the capacitor, and pretty much wiggle it back and forth until it breaks off. And there you go, that's the capacitor. And then there's this little like uh, plastic plate. That one just shattered in half. And here's the two little pads you can see. Um, this one, the lead still stayed attached, but I've found that by, you know, applying heat to the each side and trying to pry it up, um, sometimes you end up tearing the actual motherboard and then it's just completely ruined. So the best way and easiest way is just to wiggle it off because you're just probably gonna throw this away anyway. So let's go ahead and do that for all three of these here. Um, you can see there's three different sizes. And I'm gonna put all the trash inside this bag here. So there's three different sizes. Um, they kind of correspond to which one goes where, but just double check the, uh, the numbers on them and you'll easily figure out which one goes where. And capacitors, um, they are very much polarized. So you need to make sure that you're mounting them the correct orientation. So just like that. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and remove this largest one just by rocking it back and forth. And there we go. That one came off really easily. Didn't tear the motherboard at all. And then same thing for these two on the side here. Just grab it, rock it back and forth, and then it comes off. This one, the little leads stayed on, so I'm just pulling those off separately. And that little plastic piece. And then finally this little small one. And that's it, they're off. Okay, so now let's open these in a nice little package. And remember to remember which uh, orientation these go in. Okay, so just like that. And I am going to use a little bit of flux. Let's start with this biggest one here. And I might as well put some on these two. And I'm going to go ahead and just kind of tin these a little bit by adding a little bit more solder to them. So they're nice and fresh. So just take your capacitor, make sure it's in the correct orientation. And I like to just use my hands, line it up right on the pads. It's gonna be a little bit bulky because the solder underneath needs to kind of melt. And 
and then just hold it in place. Get one side done, come in and hold it, and then melt the solder on the other side. Let me go back to the other side and just make sure that one's melted too, giving a lot of pressure on top of the capacitor. And that's it, nice and secure. Okay, so this one goes here. These are a little bit trickier because the uh, these kind of get in the way a little bit, but it's not too bad. If it's easier for you, I mean, you can definitely use some tweezers. These are like some uh, not pointy ones, they're just kind of flat. And that maybe will help you. Whoops. Or not. <laughs> maybe something with a little bit of a grip will be better. Like these pliers have like a little rough edge. I usually just use my hands, but. That's it. Okay. Um, this last one, I guess I'm going to move the camera and do a close up so you can see. Okay. So here is the last one. So it's just these two little pads right here and you just line it up. You can see there's the two little pads underneath and it kind of helps, I guess, if you kind of heat up the, the pad where it's going to go and then kind of put it in place and then let go and then once one side is on there it's gonna it's gonna stay and then so i'm gonna hold it in place just my finger like this putting downward pressure and heat up the other side it's a little bit tricky to get like underneath there but just kind of give it a little bit of time you know hold your soldering iron in place it doesn't really feel like it moves too much but i think it does and then I'm gonna go back and do the other side again, just to, there, I can actually feel that one moved a little bit. And that should be good. Let's bend these back. So, let's plug it in and check our work again. Make sure it works now. Ready? Nice and loud. All right, so one more time, just so you guys can hear it. Here's my little lav microphone, so you can hear just how loud it is. So there you go. That is how you fix the sound issues on a Game Boy Color. So sometimes it's a power switch. You might get some crackling when you turn it on and off with that. Um, definitely the volume wheel. Um, those don't often need to be replaced. They just usually need a good cleaning. Um, the headphone jack usually always needs a good cleaning, especially inside there. Occasionally your speaker will go bad and you'll have to just actually replace it. But um, I haven't had too many times where I've ever had to do that, actually. Um, I've bought a lot of motherboards that was missing a speaker, so that's why I've had to replace it. But um, and then a lot of times, if, you're, if your audio is sounding good, it's just really quiet. Um, then a lot of times, if you've tried uh, cleaning it and that doesn't fix anything, then you need to replace your capacitors. They're very inexpensive, and it's actually not that hard to, to do. So, And that will really make your Game Boy run better and last a long time, because these capacitors only last maybe 20, 30 years. Um, so get some good... Uh, high quality ones from like console 5 and yeah so um, yeah let me know if you guys have any questions at all uh, I'm happy to show you how to fix 
any other parts as well or dismantle anything and yeah just let me know what you guys want to see next all right i guess that's it and i will see you guys next time